أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ويل لكل همزة لمزة الذي جمع مالا وعدد يحسب أن ماله وخلد كلا لينبذن في الحتمة وما أدراك ما الحتمة نار الله الموقع التي تأتلع على أفئدة إنها عليهم مؤسدة في عمد ممددة الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى عليه وصحبه وسلم أما بعد حبت في الله continuing on in our study of تفسير سورة الحمزة we and to go back to the English meaning, woe to every slanderer and backbiter who has gathered wealth and counted it. He thinks that his wealth will make him last forever. Nay, verily he will be thrown into the crushing fire. And what will make you know what the crushing fire is? The fire of a law kindled, which leaps up over the hearts. Verily it shall be closed upon them in pillars stretched forth. We left off where Imam Sa'di says he thinks due to his ignorance that his wealth will make him last forever in this life. How many people, because we want to make this as relevant as possible, that's why I chose this surah. Uh, how many people believe that their material wealth will aid them or will keep them lasting forever. They cling to life. They cling to the material items. They cling to their wealth and status like the mu'min clings to iman. And this is a great danger and sickness that pervades all of us. It infects all of us to a greater or lesser extent, or most of us to a greater or lesser extent. And some of the people, if they're disbelievers in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then, and if they are people who Allah has blessed with an abundance of wealth and status, some of those people are really nothing without that. If they lose it, even a little bit, they become humiliated, even in the sh smallest way that they are uh, they become destroyed in this life. And an example, I can think of several examples. How many Hollywood actors and actresses have we seen for various reasons lose their mind and act insane out in public for reasons unknown to us? that they have the wealth, that they have the status, they have all of those things, things that many of us want and desire, but it's not enough, they're not satisfied. But yet, the believer has the sustenance of Iman, is blessed with Iman and faith, and may struggle in their daily lives, and has desires. However, they're not controlled by that and they have Iman to fall back on. When you don't have Iman to fall back on, all you have is your wealth. Your wealth will lead you astray for sure. And the lack of Iman means you are astray for sure. And so then what is the end result? Possibly suicide, possibly your destruction, possibly your fall from status. Look at all the people. Let's look at, let's just take some names like, uh, well now, Min Fadli Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, she's getting some guidance it seems. I think Lindsay Lohan is one of them. That she's been listening to the Quran and being around Muslims and, and uh, all kind of things. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide her. But she had a, a time where I think she went uh, down. Uh, you have so many people that we can just name countless artists who died of overdoses, who died of their medication, Michael Jackson, Prince, uh, so many people, they didn't have any Iman. They didn't have Iman to ground them. So their status left them, even if, whether they were arrogant people or not. How many people are known for their arrogance, known for taking so much pride in their status, and the littlest 
of events shakes them and they're destroyed. And a, a, another last thing, not to get off astray, but it keeps coming into my mind. I was reading an article somewhat uh, in the past year and it was about uh, Paris Hilton. Okay, and someone played a prank on her that the plane was crashing and it was an Egyptian singer or Egyptian actor or something. She had left from Egypt, I believe, or somewhere in the Middle East. And they played a prank and she just went hysterical. The wealth didn't, uh, wasn't going to save her anymore. Her looks for those who find her looks attractive wasn't going to benefit her anymore her status her all of this her hotels her father's hotels all of these things her name none of that was going to benefit and she forgot it all i'm sure in that instant because she thought she was going to die and she became hysterical clinging to the remnants of life because that doesn't benefit you ultimately it benefits you not at all I don't say that we live in caves and we just, we don't desire things, no. But Iman is what grounds you. Iman di distinguishes the, the mu'min from the kafir. And the ahla tawheed and ahla khair from ahla shirk wa bid'ah. So he thinks due to his ignorance that his wealth will make him last forever in this life. Consequently, all their dedication and striving is for increasing their wealth, which they think will lengthen their lifespan. Plastic surgery, plastic body parts, uh, all these famous entertainers, they get their body parts insured. Subhanallah, gharib. They are unaware of the fact that their miserliness will reduce their lifespan and bring doom to their household, while acts of righteousness will increase their lifespan. That's for Ahl Iman. So doing righteous deeds will increase your lifespan. So do as much righteousness as possible. Nay, verily he will be thrown and cast into the crushing fire. And what will make you know what the crushing fire is? Wa'iyadhan billah. These ayat magnify, uh, magnify the horror and dreadfulness of the fire. Allah explains his statement here by saying, the fire of Allah kindled. Kindled by fuel consisting of men and stones which due to this its intense heat leaps over the hearts reaching the heart through the body subhanallah and for those who have lived in hot climates for example today and this is Ramadan when I left my work at after Dhuhr it was so hot in my car and it was a dust storm because I I'm, my work is in a small town and it was so hot when I got in my car, it said 49 degrees Celsius. With my AC as I was driving, it got down to 48, 47 by the time I reached my dwelling. Subhanallah. And that heat, it felt like a, ton a tunnel of heat. It was so hot and so dry and the dust. What about Jahannam? This is a taste in this life, and this is Jahannam breathing. But what about Jahannam? What about the hereafter? We have to reflect on this. We have to reflect on the hellfire. We have to reflect on these ayat. These, these are ayat shari'ah. These ayat shari'ah that we're talking about here, because we're explaining, bringing the tafsir from Imam Sa'di. Uh, these ayat shari'ah. These are uh, sharia ayat, meaning the verses of the Quran. But there's another type of ayat. These are called ayat koniya. What are they called? Ayat koniya. Ayat koniya. These are the signs in the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ayat koniya are the signs in the creation of Allah. And those signs help us to reflect on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the creator. So as the Salaf used to say that it's impermissible to reflect on the Thatiya of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but rather reflect on his, his uh, ayat koniya, that which will show you and remind you of the Creator. But don't think about the Thatiya of the Creator. We don't have the ability to understand uh, uh, you know, to, to comprehend Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
except in the way that he has mentioned in the Quran and in the authentic sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Ar-Rahman ala ars istawa. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rules above his throne. We know that. We believe that. We know that he rises above his throne and he's above his creation in a manner that suits his majesty. In a manner that suits his majesty. That's what we believe is Ahl Sunnah. That's what we can comprehend. But we don't know the kafia. As Imam Malik was asked, and this is being asked about ayat or the dhatiya of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in fact. Someone said, Ya Abu Abdullah, Kaiva uh, Istawa. He said, O oh, father of Abdullah, meaning Imam Shafi'i or Imam Malik. He said, You know, how? How did Ar Rahman uh, rise above his throne? Imam Malik put his head down and began to sweat profusely out of just anger, just like, what kind of question is this? And he said, Al-Istawa, Al-Istawa, Ma'loom, Wa Kifiya, Majhool, Wa Su'al Anhu, Bida, Wa Amta Mubtadi'a, O Kama Qal. He said, uh, Istawa, rising, is known. Meaning it's known in the Arabic language what it means to, to istawa means to rise. That's known. So we believe that. Al istawa ma'lum. It's known. It's known in the Arabic language and it's known that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does it because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says He rose above His throne. Al Rahman al Arsh istawa. Al kafiya majhul. But He said, How is majhul? The how has to do with the dhati of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We don't know how. We don't know how Allah descends to the every last third of the night to the lowest heaven. We don't know. We don't know how, how that is. We can't comprehend those things. We understand and we believe to the extent that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us the ability to understand. We know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala yanzilu rabbuna tabarak wa ta'ala kulu thulathul layl al-akhir fi yaqul. We know that Allah descends every last third of the night. We don't know how. We know Ar Rahman is the most merciful. We know who is Samir al Basir. We know he is the all hearing and he is the all uh, seeing. We know this. But the Dhatiya, we don't know. We don't, we don't uh, go beyond that. We just know he can hear what we cannot hear. He can hear everything. His Elm. His Elm. Uh, uh, that his, his knowledge encompasses everything. He knows everything before it happened, after it happened, when it happens. What would have been the result if it wouldn't have happened? Allah Taala knows all of this. But we can't deduce and even comprehend it beyond that. So that's why thinking about the that, the, that tia, this is what the extreme people of Ahl Tasawwuf and others do, and this is how they go astray. This is how they turn to philosophy. Oh, well, that means this. Oh, if Allah descends, that means this. These are the kind of thoughts that come into their mind and how they lead astray and go to kufr wa ilhad wa zandaka. This is, this is exactly it. I hope you can follow this, 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 of what I'm saying because I can see it clear as day from our studies with the ulama, but you can see it. You can see the one who tries to think about how Allah is and how He descends and how He rises and how He hears and how He sees. And that nothing is like unto Him. And they're trying to think and deduce all these things instead of accepting it. The Ashuris, what do they do? They change the meaning to fit their intellect. They change the meaning to fit their intellect. Ahl Sunnah says, La, we accept it as it is, and we don't make a likeness with the creation. So those liars upon Shaykh al Islam ibn Taymiyyah, and those liars upon Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah, and those liars on the Salafi'een, these people are in fact the deviants. They have deviated from the Siratullah al Mustaqim, the Salaf al Saleh, their Sabil, of what they said about the ayat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what, the, what they said and how they explained the verses of the Quran and how they explained uh, 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 the Sifat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
they they distorted it. Not Ahlus Sunnah. Ahlus Sunnah just says, "Hey, Ar Rahman al Ars Istawa." How can you go wrong if you take the meaning of uh, of, uh, of what Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says about Himself, or what the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam, uh, said about Allah Azza wa Jal? How how can you go astray? But the one who tries to make ta'wil of it to say, "No, it means istola." No, it means this. No, descending means this. No, rising above the throne, it means his power. Or in his hands, it means his power. It means this. It mean Those people are the ones who go astray and go on a dangerous, a dangerous path. وَعِيَادٍ بِاللَّهِ مِنْ ذَلِكَ So again, the ayat are of two types. What do we say? Ayat, shari'iyah, which you're talking about the verses of the Quran and so forth. Those are ayat. Those are verses. And then the ayat shari, uh, ayat koniya. Ayat koniya meaning the creation, meaning that we reflect. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Women ayati ya layla wa nahara wa shamsa wal kamar. And from his signs, what signs are these? These are the signs koniya. These are ayat koniya. Allah, it sa Allah says it in a verse uh, uh, shari'a. He tells us about the ayat koniya. Women ayati, Allah mentions ayat. Women ayatihi a layla wa nahar. From his signs are the uh, day and the night. Min ayati a layla wa nahar wa shamsu wal qamr. And the sun and the moon. And then Allah says, Min ayati a layla wa nahar wa shamsu wal qamr. La tashiru li shams wa la lil qamr. Wa shiru lillahi aladhi khalakuhunna in kuntum iyahu ta'abudun. Allah says, Min ayati a layla wa nahar wa shamsu wal qamr. La tashiru li shams wa la lil qamr. Wa shiru lillahi aladhi khalakuhunna in kuntum iyahu ta'abudun. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, From his signs is the day and the night and the sun and the moon. Do not prostrate to the sun and the moon. So don't prostrate to those signs. Use those signs. The sun. Wonder at the sun. Wonder at the moon. The way it's changing. SubhanAllah, the, light, the night is short now. The light will be long in the, in the winter. Wonder at the signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to show you as evidence that there is a creator for all of this. But don't get caught up in those signs to the extent that you worship it. These are what the animists do. These are what a lot of primitive people, as, you, as we call them primitive because they don't have the same quote-unquote civilization that we live in, but they live simple lives. Aborigines in New Zealand, Aborigines in Australia, uh, various uh, tribes out in the wilderness in, in various parts of Africa, in various parts of Asia, in various parts, all over the world. Okay? And their animism, they worship the ayat koniya. They go astray because they worship the signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the, the koniya. And they begin to attribute all of the wonders of the creation to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's created things, those ayat. In fact, those ayat should remind them that there's the creator of the heavens and earth, Al Khalik. Who created everything? Al Khalik li kulli shay. We'll try to come back to where we where we were. So the Imam said when he was talking about the crushing fire, these ayat, these ayat shariya, these verses, uh, magnify the horror and dreadfulness of the fire. Allah explains his statement here by saying the fire of Allah kindled, uh, kindled by fuel consisted, consisted of men and stones due to intense heat, reaching the heart through the body. Then the Imam said, to add to its intense heat, the disbelievers are imprisoned within hell, having lost hope of ever leaving it. This is why Allah says, Next, verily it shall be closed upon them and shut down in pillars from behind its gates, stretched forth to prevent them from escaping from the fire. And may Allah protect our families from the hellfire, us and our families, ameen, ya rabbil alameen. And guide our non-Muslim families, especially for those of us who have non-Muslim families. This is, uh, if we really reflect and we really practice and our Iman is up, we'll understand that this is just a travesty, in fact, because you don't want to imagine your mother, you know, right now I can read about it, but if it uh, impacts and pounds on the heart, 
you know, I don't want to see my mother in the hellfire. I don't want to see my grandmother. She's still alive in the hellfire. Lost many of my relatives on disbelief. We don't, we don't want to think, that, so we need to, uh, this is a, 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 a calling for us to call them to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and may Allah guide us and them to Islam, ameen, ya rabbil alameen, and bless us and protect us from the hellfire, and bless us all with ikhlas, with thabat, and, and our children, our progeny, you know, from going astray, and us from going astray. We can go to kufr, wa'iyadun billah. May Allah protect us. We can be consumed by that materialism that was talked about and, and think our wealth will suffice us and extend our lives instead of it being Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, instead of it being through righteous deeds and a righteous path. <clears throat> and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says every time they wish to get away therefrom, they will be put there uh, put back there too. Meaning that those people who are being punished in the hellfire, they will want to escape. And every time they try to escape, they'll be placed back in that same place. The same place of torment. Then the, sh the Imam said, we seek refuge with Allah from this fate and invoke him to grant us safety and well-being. Ameen, Ya Rabbil Alameen. And may Allah bless him with mercy and, and, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's rahmah and bless him with Jannah to Fardos for the beautiful ilm and nafiyah he left for how many uh, ulama that study his books. How many ulama do we know that are studying his books? I, I know so many, so many of my scholars, they are always teaching Imam Sa'di's books and they benefited from that great Imam. Ben Othameen is a student of Imam Sa'di. And, and you know, what can we say? That's al yantafa'bi. This is knowledge that the people will benefit after you die. He's dying, and I'm talking to an English-speaking audience, some people who will never even get to his original text in, in various parts of the world. That's a great ni'mah. And that's why the Prophet ﷺ said, That when a person dies, his deeds will cease except for three. As-Sadaqa Jariya, Al-Ilm Yuntafa'bi, or Yuntafa'bi, Wa Waladin Salihan Yad'ulahu, Ru'ahu Muslim. When a person dies, his deeds will be cut off except three. Uh, continuous charity, so building, doing khair, and then and it continue on after you die. Al-ilm uh, yuntafa'bi, knowledge that the people benefit from, like Imam Sa'di, and all these a'imma, all these books of the Salaf. Wa-waladin saliha yad'uluhu. And a righteous child that supplicates for him. Or what righteous, uh, uh, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us with righteous children that supplicate for us uh, while we live and, while we die, and when we die. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us all with knowledge that we leave behind for others to benefit from. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us all to have the wealth, the means to spend it in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's cause in great projects that benefit humanity and benefit the people and benefit us in our graves. Ameen, ya Rabbil Alameen, wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.